Hello everyone, my name is Wei and welcome to my channel. Today, we are diving into the newly open sourced Stable Diffusion 3, or SD3. The community has mixed feelings about it. Some folks love its text generation capabilities, while others are frustrated with the weird human bodies it creates. I've spent a lot of time testing SD3 media, generating tons of images and comparing it to other models like SDXL-based checkpoints, Midjourney, Ideogram, and DALI. I even merged two checkpoints and found that my merged checkpoint often outperforms the existing checkpoint in many cases. For now, I see that you can skip SD3 media. There are better models out there for different scenarios. I'll show you some pictures for comparison and I recommend some better alternatives later on. Many of you are hoping that fine-tuned checkpoints based on SD3 will improve its performance. However, you might have to wait. Currently, Swift AI has removed the SD3 fine-tuned checkpoints due to concerns that SD3's lessons grants too much power to stability AI. This could mean that the authors of SD3 fine-tuned checkpoints might have to pay exorbitant fees in the future. Unless Stability AI changes the lessening terms, it's unlikely that we'll see high-quality checkpoints based on SD3 fine-tuning anytime soon. Still, SD3 has inspired developers. For example, the creator of Fast Photo Pony borrowed SD3's T5X XL clip and added it to the V4 version, improving semantic understanding. The base model is still Pony, not SD3 so there's no risk of it being taken down. Pony also handles human anatomy better than SD3. Fast for the Pony produces great portraits, and I'll show you some of my results with it later. Next, let's compare the results of SD3 media with other models using a few carefully selected images. Along with SD3 and Fast for the Pony, I tested several other models, including Juggernaut XL with the latest hyper technology, the lighting version of DreamShaper XL, Albedo Base XL, Cost XL, my own merged checkpoint, Midjourney, Dali, and Ideogram. I'll be evaluating their capabilities across several dimensions. First, let's look at text generation. I've chosen four models with strong text generation abilities. The top left image is from Stable Diffusion 3, the top right from Midjourney, the bottom left from Dali, and the bottom right from Ideogram. Here's the main prompt I used. In my opinion, Dali in the lower left corner does the best job. The world is completely spelled out with fruits and are easy to recognize. The text generated by SD3 and Ideogram doesn't look like fruits. It looks more like bread. Midjourney in the upper right corner also uses fruit to spell out the words, but they aren't very recognizable. Now, let's look at another set of images. This time, only Midjourney and Ideogram generate text without errors. In terms of artistic effect, Midjourney still shines. The other set of images show similar results. Overall, SD3 is slightly weaker than the other three in terms of text generation ability. However, for an open source model, SD3's text generation capability is already quite impressive. Now, let's compare detail generation with an image of a bee collecting pollen. Dali's colors and textures are unrealistic, and Midjourney's bee colors are off. SD3's bee looks realistic but lacks magnification. My merge of albedo base and cos XM models produces a great result. Here's another set featuring dragonfly wings. The dragonfly generated by SD3 is defective. I tried several times, but couldn't get it right. On the other hand, the details of the wings generated by Midjourney are very realistic, and the art is also excellent. Albedo basis details are also good, although it adds an extra pair of wings. The texture generated by SD3 is decent, but it lacks enough magnification, possibly due to a lack of macro images in the dataset. Midjourney's details are strong, 
and my immersed model has great lighting and detail. Let's move on to human anatomy. Here, SD3's weaknesses become apparent. The proportion of the arms are unrealistic, and the fingers are stuck together. The other three models perform better. Fast photo pony, while a bit too muscular, has great hands. The ballet dancer generated by SD3 has a standard pose, but her hands and feet are so messed up. Midjourney gets the limbs right, but doesn't quite understand the dance pose. The Dream Shaper's limb have minor issues, and the dance pose isn't standard. The best result comes from my immersed checkpoint. Finally, let's take a look at the yoga poses. SD3 continues to struggle with limb issues, and mid-journey poses aren't standardized either. The best results come from Dream Shaper. To summarize, it's clear that SD3 isn't suitable for generating images of the human body. However, the open source SD Excel checkpoints performs just as well as mid-journey when it comes to human anatomy. The next dimension of comparison is interaction, meaning how well the models handle interactions between people, animals, or other objects. In this set of images, I asked for a butterfly to rest on a child's shoulder. None of the models nailed this request perfectly, but Dolly came the closest. In another set of images, Dolly again came closest to fulfilling the prompt shown in the lower right corner. SD3 also did well, capturing the character's expression nicely, although it still struggled with limb accuracy. Midjourney didn't perform as well as SD3 in terms of interactivity. Overall, SD3 is quite good at handling interactions, likely due to its multimodal diffusion transformer architecture. We all know that generating hands is a challenge for AI. Let's compare the results from each model. In these form images, SD3 performs the worst. Midjourney generates hands with some minor issues, particularly with the nail caps. The hands in the next two images also have minor problems. But overall, the hands generated by Midjourney and Albedo Base are quite good. SD3, however, continues to struggle significantly with hand generation. Finally, let's look at how these models handle faces. All three models produce very realistic results, and SD3's realism is quite impressive. Let's zoom in for a closer look. The details are quite lifelike. I have to say SD3 has made significant improvements in realism. Now, let's examine another set of images. I've included one generated by Dowling. While Dowling's image isn't as realistic in texture and color, it's the only one that accurately renders all the details of the prompt. The tear, for instance, is so vivid that even a camera might struggle to capture it this well. This time, SD3 is also very realistic but doesn't fully capture the specific details requested in the prompt. After looking at so many pictures, Let's summarize. The biggest problem with SD3 is its poor understanding of the human body, especially when a person is lying down. For the model to accurately understand the human body, it needs to be trained with a large number of images of exposed human bodies. However, Stability used an NSFW detection model that filtered out many such images during training. Without this filter, the model would face regulatory issues again. This is a common dilemma for open source models. Moreover, this release is a 2B checkpoint, not the 8B version that everyone was expecting. While the realism of this medium-sized model is quite strong, its artistry is lacking. Many generated images have poor lighting effects and are easily overexposed. For example, in this image, the little boy loses detail in his hair and clothes. The full version of SD3 expected to be much better. You can see comparisons made by Reddit user Virus Character. And I must say, the art for SD Excel based checkpoints is pretty good now. For instance, I immersed 
a battle based Excel and a cost Excel. And the lighting effects in these generated images are quite impressive, right? Okay, that's all for this video. Please like and support the channel. See you next time.